Welcome to the Bonnie Lake Church of the Nazarene. Don't forget, you can still give electronically through either the Tithe Lee app or through a link on the church website, www.bonnielakenazarene.org. We are still here for you. Send all of your prayer requests through the prayer chain and be sure to keep us updated on the requests. If you are in need or know of anyone in need during this time, contact Pastor Steve Ripp. Monster Bites! Turns out the call was coming from inside their own house. Isn't that spooky? And, uh, yeah, I know. I got another one. I got another one. Um, I heard this from a friend whose friend's cousin said this really happened to him. So, uh, it turns out if you stand in the shower and in the bathroom and yell mom three times, a woman appears carrying a towel. Isn't that spooky? That's freaky. Yeah, I thought so too. Ooh. Good morning, church. We want to say happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. And I hope that we've gotten to all who call this their church home. If not, get a hold of us at office at bonnielakenazarene.org or call me and we'll see what we can do about getting you this. But we just, I've seen about 45 of you ladies and families as we handed this out. I heard an interesting devotion this morning. This is just for you moms. I heard this pastor talking about moms and how everything is has expectations that a mom does everything and needs to be perfect at everything she does. And I thought that's an interesting concept. And then the pastor said, the truth of the matter is, none of us can be perfect at everything we do. So I want moms, I want you to take a deep breath and relax. Jesus has got you. You don't have to be perfect at everything you do. You just have to trust in Jesus and he'll guide and direct you. Don't get overwhelmed because you failed at this or you didn't do this right. Just know that Jesus has you in his hand and he loves you. And a great responsibility that you have of being mom to your little ones. It's a wonderful thing to know that you love Jesus and that you want to guide your children up in the way of the holy God of Israel. That's, that's good to know, right? So take a deep breath. Uh, God will perfect you. That word literally means that he is at work making you into his image and into his likeness. When you have a bad day, we all have them. Take a deep breath and take the next step. In Jesus' name, God bless you, moms. Usually we'd have your rose up here. However, this year we would have done this. So I did. I brought it to you. I want to make sure that you all were very well and okay. To those of you who are watching this who said to me, I'm discouraged, I'm, I'm depressed. May Jesus Christ, the living Son of the God, come right now into that room where you're sitting and you're hearing this. And may he surround you with his spirit and may he drive out the darkness of depression. And may he lift your heart and may your burden be light and your yoke easy and may you know that God loves you. Have a good day in Jesus. Amen. Come on, sweetie. Oh, honey, you've got you've got something on your face. brush your teeth? Did you really brush your teeth? Let me smell your breath. Mom! Okay, Jake, honey, this is the only thing I can find, all right? <laughs> Mom! Yeah, it's a compound fracture. <sighs> I'm sorry, sweetheart. You're gonna be okay. Mom? Well, you have a good set of crutches? Seriously, Jake, what am I going to do with you? Mom. Hi, Jake. Hi. Ooh, she's really cute. Mom. Mom? Not a chance. I left all that behind. Let's get 
Mom. Jake, sit up straight, honey. Mom.
goes out to all of you. I've been praying for all of you and the church and pastor and his family. Um, I pray that you know that God is with you and he is always with you. Um, <clears throat> praise the Lord. I thank God every day that he's in my life and he's uh, helped my wife through bad times. She's had a heart trans um, I mean heart uh, surgery a freeway bypass a few years back and he brought her through that and he's brought me through a couple surgeries on my knee and my back and I'm trusting God all the way through this pandemic that we have going on in the world today and I pray for the world I pray for our land to be healed and I pray for all the people that are sick with this COVID-19 and for the ones that went home already, just have a moment of silence, please. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Our Father who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Bless our day and bless the church. And may we all be back together soon. Hi, my name is Bonnie, and I'm a member of the Bonnie Lake Church of the Nazarene. And with this stay home order, it's like, it's really hard. I miss my family. I miss my church family. I really been struggling to wear a mask, not wear a mask. Um, do I have to come home from buying groceries and put on clothes? Is my hair contaminated with virus? I don't know. And so it, it's frustrating. So because I miss my church, I've been playing around making a Lego church. And it's supposed to look like our church, but it's not. Similar. <clears throat> but that's kind of life. Right now, life is not normal. Life is different. And we will have a different normal. And so I just kind of, you know, I want to keep going, enjoying my life because I've been so blessed. But I have a Bible verse I've always considered a favorite for myself, my Bible verse. And you find that in Psalms 71. 18, even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, O God, until I declare my power to the next generation and your might to all who are to come. And so let us pray. Dear Holy Father, I want to thank you for my life. I'm very thankful to live here in the United States and the state of Washington You've created this world to be our friend, to always be with us, protect us. And we just are very blessed that you loved us so much because of sin. Life is not perfect. We do not do things totally right all the time. And so we're asking that you be with us. Help us make the right decisions of how to take care of ourselves, how to take care of our friends and neighbors at a distance, and um, give us the peace that we need during this time until we find out what our new normal life is going to be. So thank you for loving us. Thank you for my life, my home, my family, and... Um, even the animals that you created for us here on this world. We can laugh, enjoy them, and they give us comfort. But you're the biggest way of peace. But we have to ask for it. You sent your son Jesus to come to earth, show us a good way to live, to love, forgive others. And because of that, when Jesus died on the cross, he took my sins, but I had to ask him, God, I messed up. Please forgive me. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that I will be with 
Jesus in heaven forever and ever. But we just need to have that reassurance sometimes where the church family can do that. And, um, but it's like we know you're there and thank goodness for your word, the Bible, because it is the truth. But we have to read it so we can understand. In Jesus' name, amen. Ready. Uh, we were born again in 1959 in a little Nazarene church in Bonnie Lake, Washington. And uh, it, actually, it was the first church built in Bonnie Lake. And it wasn't long after that that. Uh, now you're going into convoy church. Well, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, my wife and I. In 1959, we had an altar call at the church, and we both went to the altar, and uh, we accepted God as our own personal Savior. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to talk about Jesus, because I get blessed. <laughs> That's okay. But we both accepted God at the same time. I, They had the altar call, and I raised my hand, and I happened to look over at her, and she had her hand up at the same time. And we went to the altar together and accepted God. And I received him that right then. And later on, I decided, and, well... The Lord put on to me that I should be born again and that I should set myself apart from the world and be connected to Him. Sanctified. So, sanctified, in other words, mm -hmm. is what we call it in the Nazarene Church. But I'm so pleased that God called me. And it's hard for me to talk about it, but... Uh, you know, things just progressed and progressed. And then we moved to Eastern Washington. And I think I came the closest to God when I was in Eastern Washington because uh, I was a minister and a director of the cowboy churches over there. And it just was a different atmosphere entirely. Uh... The people were more loose, I would say. Or laid back. Or laid back, you know, than in our church over here. Because we're in the cities, and over there, it's more country. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I don't know. We just really enjoyed Cowboy Church. Uh, a friend of mine had the Cowboy Churches over there, and he asked me to preach. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I said, my job is to hand out little New Testaments. And God struck me right there in a job. It's not a job. It was an opportunity. So, during that time, he led me to enough people in the 10 years that I gave away, or we gave away, God and I, we gave away nine cases mm -hmm. of the Cowboy Church's Bible and a little New Testament. Uh, I just thank him for that opportunity, and that uh, it drew me closer to God. And now when I came over here, uh, we went back to the Nazarene Church. And I thought I was happy at the Cowboy Church, but I know this might sound like a commercial <laughs> for, for the church, but it's just, uh, it's overwhelming. We have a beautiful pastor, and the people are all filled with the Spirit and just love God. 
And I think I'll let my wife say a few things. Well, I don't know what to say other than I agree with everything you've said. You yeah. know. Well, uh, tell him about the one time you gave Bibles away and the man said no. Oh, yeah. There was a time that uh, we went into this restaurant and the guy was sitting there with a the cowboy hat on and everything. So I thought, now this is myself this time, I thought, oh, I should give him a cowboy Bible. But it wasn't God that told me to do that. And I said, would you like a cowboy Bible? And he said, absolutely not. I don't believe in that stuff. And he says, I don't want nothing to do with it. Keep your cowboy church. And I thought, oh, okay. I said, well, God bless you anyway. <laughs> so we went on. And, you know, it was probably a year later. We went back in. And that guy was sitting there again. And I just said, good morning. And we walked on by. And he said, ho, ho, wait a minute. And I said, what, what do you need? And he says, I want one of those cowboy Bibles that you have. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that was God, not me. When I asked him, we didn't even want one. <laughs> no, he did. But no, he did, because it was God talking yeah. to him. It was a, and that was a blessing. That was a blessing that I cannot even explain. Mm -hmm. But I gave him one of the cowboy Bibles. And we went on with it from there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just pleased that we had yeah. the opportunity to uh, serve God in different directions. This is the last of our series, Come Alive Church. We'll begin a new series next week. I want to say it's been exciting to be in the presence of the living God. As I said earlier, it's so nice to greet and be and see some of you and your children. Hey, we come to a story uh, after they had finished breakfast and eaten those fish, which we did a week ago, two weeks ago. We come to this story. It's an interesting story in Peter's life because Jesus asked him some questions and as we begin the Word of God and the breaking of it today, I want you to hear Jesus asking you the same questions. We'll go into the little detail in just a moment, but I think Jesus still asks us the questions that he asked Peter. Um, in a way of introduction, I think that Peter is so much like some of us in the day that we live in. And I think this scripture has a very pertinent uh, point for us to hear from. You know, theology is an interesting thing because sometimes we worship theology rather than worshiping God. And, and sometimes if we do that, we can have a theology that's not very good biblically. And we worship what we think rather than listening to what God knows. And so we need to apply that to our heart in this story today. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my sheep. He said to him again, second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. Wow. It's interesting. Feed my sheep, tend my sheep. There's a different sequence here. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, Second time, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, Jesus said to him, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish to go. 
This he spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved followed, following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, who is this one who betrays you? And Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, to Peter, here we are. That's a great story, isn't it? But listen to what he said to Peter. Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come... What is that to you? You, here we go, follow me. And then the saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if I will that the remain till I come, what is that to you? Let's pray. Father, here we are. Hear our word. Break your bread. Instruct us through the Holy Spirit into the front rooms, into the rooms we're gathered in. And Jesus, give us the wisdom that you have for our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. So when they had eaten breakfast, verse 15, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? It's an interesting word because when you do some research on that word love, when Jesus said that to him, Peter answered in a different type of love than what Jesus meant. Peter answered in a, a kind of a brotherly love, kind of an affection. Jesus was asking, do you love me with everything? And it's pertinent that you hear, he says this to him, he said, he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. It's interesting because Jesus meant, do you love me with everything? Jesus meant, will you, will you surrender it all to me? Jesus meant, will you follow me to the cross? Of course, we haven't got to the cross yet, right? But Jesus said, will you follow me? Will you feed my sheep? What does that mean? Feed my sheep. What? What do you want me to feed him? Fish and bread like you did when you fed the 5,000? Or do you want me to give the bread of life? Or do you mean take care of him? Do you mean to... To break the word of God, do you mean to live such a life that, that we can set an example and by what God has done in us, other men and women and children can see that Jesus is the one who sets us free? Do I love Jesus? Do you love Jesus enough to surrender your life to him? It's interesting because you can go back to chapter 18 of the Gospel of John and you can begin to read in there where Jesus is already being accused and he's already before Pontius Pilate and the, and the Pharisees are already doing their thing and the priest. And you can read in there where Peter denied Jesus three times. And here we have Jesus asking Peter three times, do you love me? Uh, it's, it's, it's not an accident. And so here we are again, and he said to him again, second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you again. Jesus means one thing, Peter means another. And he said to him, tend my sheep. My brother had sheep. Had over 100 herd of sheep. And uh, it was an interesting concept to understand sheep. Because it was interesting to see that when a sheep got sick, a lot of times a lot of other sheep would get sick. Hence, we find ourselves in the coronavirus syndrome, plant pandemic. But it's interesting, when my brother would take care of one sheep, and he would make sure that if it had an open wound, we would make sure that it had the antibiotics and the salve that it needed, and that sheep would get healed. It would be interesting, as we would go through that sheep that was the sickest, he'd get well, and we'd keep doing that until finally all the sheep were well. And Jesus says, tend to my sheep. He, he literally is telling Peter he's, and us today that we're to take care of each other the best that we can do. The beginning of the church in Pentecost, which we're going to talk about in just a few short weeks, the interesting thing about Pentecost is that the fire of God came 
and he ignited the fire in the lives. And Peter, who denied him, preached the message, and 3,000, over 3,000 were saved. And it's interesting, tending to the sheep is our important responsibility as a body of Christ to make sure that we can do everything we can, not just physical needs, although that is a part of it, but spiritual needs. This is why I say to you that the day is coming when we will ignite a fire and no power from hell can keep the church from coming together. No politician, no power on this earth can, can come against the gates of the church of Jesus Christ. One day we're going to stand together. But in this time, I hear Jesus saying, do you love me? Hey, Steve, do you love me? Tend to my sheep. And constantly the Holy Spirit is speaking to me as a body of believers and as a pastor and as a Christian and as a follower of Jesus, can I do more? And sometimes the enemy likes to pounce on me and say, well, you're not doing enough or you're not doing it for this one. The truth of the matter is we have to listen to the Holy Spirit and do what he tells us to do. We cannot save the world, but Jesus can save the world. And one by one, we used to have a thing out in our foyer with the picture of Christ and it said, win one. One by one, we shall change the world. We don't have to set our goals that high. Just for you and I is to be willing to love Jesus enough to tend to his sheep and to talk to them, out, to talk to them about who Jesus is. I had someone call me this week, and, and I know when I say this, you know who you are, and praise God, you got victory. But... Someone wanted to give their heart to Jesus, and you can lead them to Jesus. You don't need the pastor to come and do it. You know what it takes to follow Jesus. You know what it took for you to find Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, church. Start spreading that good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and tend to his sheep. And then he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Now Peter was grieved. He said to him, you know you, that I love you. Why do you know that I love you? Because Peter said, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Interesting. The reason Peter couldn't respond with the love of agape or surrender is because Peter, in his mind, had the times of his failure. And he didn't want to put himself in a place where he would fail again. And so he, he really could have been um, a little concerned of making a bold statement in case he fell again. And you can understand that. Jesus is being uh, persecuted and, and he's out warming himself in the fire and the gates. And, and, you know, someone says, aren't you one of his disciples? Aren't you one of those people that was with him? And Peter says, you don't know what you're talking about. No. Literally, when you do a research on that, Peter was adamant. I am not one of those and so Peter, hasn't been that long, quite frankly, when Peter did this. Make no doubt about this, Jesus is reinforcing what it takes for all of us to live for him. Do you love Jesus? Feed my sheep. Hey, do you love Jesus, church? Tend to my sheep. Hey, do you love Jesus? Then feed my sheep. Those are great words. And I love this because when Jesus was done and Paul, Peter had said to him, you know all things, he says, Jesus said to him, feed my sheep most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. 
And this he spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to Peter, follow me. Follow me. If you go down to verse 22, he again says this text. After all that he's talking to Jesus about, he said to him, if I will that he remain, after he talks about John, and Peter says, what about this one? And, John, and, Pe and Jesus really says to Peter, it's none of your business. Just do what I ask you to do. Just become what I want you to become. Don't worry about John. Don't worry about other people. Just do what I ask you to do. How about that? How about if we stop worrying about what others are doing and we start seeking the face of God for what he wants to do through us? Amen? Let's not, let's not just worry about what other people are doing or whether they're blessed, more blessed than we are. They have more things. No, let's worry about what... No, that's not very good biblical words. Let's let Jesus do what he wants to do in us and let him take care of the other folks that he's doing work in and just go where God wants us to go and walk in obedience that he wants us to walk in. But I want to talk to you just about this word here where he says in verse 19, when he says to Peter again, follow me. It's a present imperative word. And the sense of this word, the giving sense of this word is literally, follow me now, right now, and forever. The word literally is Jesus is really saying to you, and he said it to Peter, and he's saying it to the church today, and he's saying it to me, you, my church, my brothers, my sisters, my disciples, follow me now and forever. It's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though Peter had failed, and you're about to see a video that talks about grace, it's a great, great story of God's grace. But he wants us to follow him right now and forever. Yesterday's gone. Praise God. Tomorrow's a new day, but it hasn't yet come. We're living in this day. And church, will you love Jesus and follow him now and forever? Will you love him enough to feed his sheep? Will you love him enough to tend his sheep? Will you love him enough to surrender yourself to let God become, for God to become the Lord and Savior and the King of your life so that he can direct you to become all that he wants you to be? Peter's a great story, jumping a little ahead into the Pentecost, but here's a man who, who, who came on fire at Pentecost, began to speak something he never would do before, but because of the work God had done in his life, and partly because of this text, and partly because Peter surrendered, and partly because Peter failed, and partly because Peter knew what that was, Peter gave his life and surrendered it because he knew, Peter knew here, and he knew, knows at Pentecost that he cannot heal himself, he cannot save himself, he cannot empower himself, but the living God has to do it in him. And that's the message today, is if you love God, you'll feed his sheep, tend to his sheep, but if you love God, you'll allow him to do in you what he wants to do. Yeah. Come on, Lord Jesus, do it. Oh, how I need a work of God in my life. How I need God to be master and maker and king, how I need God to overpower my flesh and my carnality, how I need God to overpower me with his holiness, how I need God to give his truth to me that sets me free. Temptation, yes, we all face it. Failure, part of life. but it doesn't have to stay that way because the living God is pouring into us to make us victorious. One of my favorite songs, Victory in Jesus. I have victory in Jesus. My daughter sent me a quote this week from Billy Graham. And... Uh, it was one of those days where she was in her prayer time and 
and, and she was kind of, you know, the, the burden of the world was on her. You know what I'm saying? You all have felt, that's my country coming out. You all have felt that lately? And, and Billy Graham, back in the 60s, he, he, this was his quote. He said, I do not put my trust in politicians. I do not put my trust in government. I do not put my trust in money. I do not put my trust in myself. I put my trust in Jesus alone. Think about that for a minute. I trust him alone. I don't trust the government. I pray for the government. What do I mean by that? I pray that God would ignite a fire in that place called Washington, D.C., and all of the state capitals and all the municipalities with all the councils and all the mayors that mighty God would be lifted up. My trust is in God, not in what they say or do. My trust is in him alone. My trust is not in the politicians. My trust is not in my money. My trust is not in myself. I am fully trusting in Jesus Christ. And that's what Jesus was asking Peter. In the end, as we conclude this message, will you trust Jesus with everything? Will you surrender to him? Will you lay down your dreams? Will you lay down your finances? Will you lay down your life? Will you lay down your pain? Will you lay down your suffering? Will you lay down your failures? Will you allow Jesus to set you free? Come on, church. Be set free. And when we gather in a physical place, can you imagine what it's going to be like when God has done a work in us? Can you imagine what heaven's going to be like? We can have heaven on earth when we gather, even here today as we speak. We are together. Come, Lord Jesus, with thy power and thy might. In your name we pray. Amen. Grace is God's unmerited favor for us, his crazy love. And the truth is, many times we struggle understanding it. If you find yourself struggling to understand God's grace, don't beat yourself up. Even the disciples struggled with understanding grace. Jesus, is that you? You're alive. I can't believe you're alive. Okay, I was in the boat and I wasn't catching any fish, okay? But I heard this voice and the voice said, cast your net to the other side. And so I'm thinking, I'm a fisherman. I know what I'm doing, but I'm not catching any fish, you know? And so I throw that net over there and then a gaggle of fish pop into that net and I'm going, this is a total miracle. Who could have done that? I need to know who told me to throw the net to the other side. And boom, I look up and I mean, there is you. You're looking at me on the seashore going, it is I, the Lord, and you're alive. I can't believe you're alive. <laughs> this is awesome. Andrew, get out of the boat. Come on. Peter, yeah. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. I love you. You're alive. This is so great. Good. And, then feed my sheep. Andrew, get out of the boat. Come on, man. It's him. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? I love you. Yes. And I'm so sorry about that rooster cluck, and I had no idea what that meant, but I do not. I'm better for it. All right. Okay. Good. Then feed my sheep. Andrew, I'm smiling, but I'm serious. Come on, get out of the boat. It's him. Peter. Yeah. Do you love me? Jesus, mere words cannot describe the passion that I have for you. I love you. You know everything. I love you. Good. Good. Then feed my sheep. I didn't even know you had livestock. That is so like you, though. There's something new about you all the time. That's what I love about you. Peter, yeah. do you remember uh, the morning the ladies went to the tomb? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all in the upper room trying to figure out what to do next, you know, because we thought you were dead. You know, you were dead, you know, and we're trying to figure all that out, you know. And Mary comes running up, and Mary's like saying, beehive, beehive, beehive. And I'm thinking, I'm allergic to bees. Like, keep them out. You know what I'm saying? But as she kept getting closer, I heard her correctly. She was saying, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. And we're going, who's alive, who's alive? And she said, she was at the tomb, and the tomb was empty. And she said that the, there was an angel there. And the angel said, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay, he is risen. And so me and John, we hightailed it down there. And if John says he beat me, he's totally lying, all right? I beat him, FYI, all right, you know? And we get down there and I'm looking in that tomb and it is, it is empty. There's nothing in there, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? And John is right there. John is so good with words. He should write a book. He is so good with words. And John said, don't you get it, Peter? This is everything Jesus said he was going to do, and you did it, and it's done. Let's go. This is so great. Wait, yeah. the angel said what? Uh, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay. He is risen. You've risen. Let's go. This he is okay. said what? Go tell the disciples and Peter.
go tell the disciples and Peter. You said my name. Why did you say my name? Peter, that's grace. No, no, I don't, I don't deserve that because that night people kept coming up to me asking me if I belonged to you, if I was with you, and I kept denying you left and right, all right? No, no it'll take me my whole life to make up for what I did. It was unforgivable no, for what I did. No, What I did on the cross was meant to take what is unforgivable and make it forgivable. That's my grace. It's not about you. It's always about me. That's grace, Peter. Hey, as I went around and visited you this week, a lot of you asked how the church was doing financially, and you're very concerned. I'm sorry. I, I thank you for your faithfulness, and, and you have been faithful, and you have been giving your finances, you have been giving your tithe, you have been giving your offering. Um, but I just know that God's going to be faithful. And I know that God, to those who are faithful in giving, they've been faithful for years. And I don't take you for granted, but I want to tell you, we are a little down, but we're not out. It's okay. I trust the Lord Jesus Christ, and whatever he gives us, we're going to move forward. I want to tell you that we applied for the protection loan for payroll, and we received $13,500. And what that means is if we use that for payroll, uh, we will, it will become a grant, okay? And so what we've determined is we'll use it if we need it. If not, we'll give it back. Wouldn't it be great to give it back? <laughs> but I just felt the Lord just seemed to speak to me. And I'll tell you something, folks. It was the quickest, quickest government loan I've ever been involved in. It was so smooth. I'm telling you, honest, I hear friends who are in business and other things, and they still haven't got it. And four days after we applied, I think four or five days, we had it. So I think God was in it. And I want to tell you that. But I want to say to you, here's, here's a couple of little stories for you. Uh, someone drove up to my house this week and said, hey, pastor, are you home or at the church? And at the time, I was home. I'm bringing my tithe by. Don't give your tithe to pastor. And here's an interesting thing. It was cash. I said, don't give me cash. I don't, it'll be in my pocket, and two weeks later, I'll be washing it. No, I washed my pants a little quicker than that. But, but they came. They drove out of their way to make sure that the kingdom of God got what belonged to the kingdom of God. That's the exciting thing. I visited, visited someone uh, this week, and, and you know who I am. If you're listening to this, it's okay. I'm not going to speak your name. But they, they said, Pastor, we got a check. <laughs> I said, don't give it to me. They said, don't lose it. It's a big check. See, God's moving on you. Just be faithful. You can give, as Cal says, Electronically, you can send it in mail. You can bring it by the office, just social distance, at least a foot and a half from me as you hug me. And uh, you can bring it by. I'm here mostly in the afternoon. Deanne is back in the scheduled time. Um, but I would just say we're doing okay. To God be the glory and to your faithfulness, may God give you a great blessing for that. So thank you again, church, for how you're doing it. In Jesus' name.